Good morning, everyone. The Mass Intentions for today, March the 19th, for the needs of Holy Mother Church. I thought not. Anyway. Um, for the suffering world and for South Africa. For Leo Clifford Diaz and all those recommended to our prayers. For the deceased members of our families. For Sister Carol of Christ and, Sis and Jose Nuli Gaza. And for the souls in purgatory, the conversion of sinners, and for the reign of God's kingdom on earth. This is now a Rejoice Sunday. That's why we have uh, rose colored vestments and flowers, a slight uh, relaxation of the rigors of Lent. Rejoice, Jerusalem, and all who love her. Be joyful, all who were in mourning. Exult and be satisfied at her consoling breast. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. So yes, we rejoice to be called together as a community around the altar. We rejoice that our sins are forgiven, and we rejoice that the strength of God is with us to keep us free from sin and safe from all distress. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who through your word reconcile the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten to the solemn celebration to come through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Samuel. In those days, the Lord said to Samuel, Fill your horn with oil and go. I will send you to Jesse, the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. When they came, he looked on Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord sees not as man sees. Man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. And Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel. 
And Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen these. And Samuel said to Jesse, Are all your sons here? And he said, There remains yet the youngest, but behold, he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and fetch him, for we will not sit down till he comes here. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and had beautiful eyes, and was handsome. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. Near restful waters he leads me. He revives my soul. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. He guides me along the right path. For the sake of his name, though I should walk in the valley of the shadow of death, no evil would I fear, for you are with me. Your cook and your staff will give me comfort. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. You have prepared a table before me in the sight of my foes. My head you have anointed with oil. My cup is overflowing. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell for length of days and ending. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brethren, once you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of light is found in all that is good and right and true. And try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is a shame even to speak of the things that they do in secret. But when anything is exposed by the light, it becomes visible. For anything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it is said, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give you light. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. He who follows me will have the light of life. Glory Glory and praise to you, O O Christ. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man blind from his birth, and he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle and anointed the man's eyes with the clay, saying to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, 
which meant sent. So he went and washed and came back seeing. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar said, Is not this the man who used to sit and beg? Some said, It is he. Others said, No, but he is like him. He said, I am the man. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the clay and opened his eyes. The Pharisees asked him how he had received his sight. He said to them, He put clay on my eyes, and I washed, and I see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, for he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, How can a man who is a sinner do such signs? And there was division among them. So they again said to the blind man, <coughs> What do you say about him, since he has opened your eyes? He said, He is a prophet. They answered him, You were born in utter sin, and would you teach us? And they cast him out. Jesus heard they had cast him out, and having found him, he said, do you believe in the Son of Man? And he answered, And who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said, You have seen him. It is he who speaks to you. He said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, it's not necessary to <laughs> say very much about struggles we have these days about light, whether it's on or off, whether we live in the light or in the darkness, and we find we live in both, when we have electricity or when we have an outage. So it's part of our daily struggle to make sure we can see our way, particularly in the evening and the night time. But of course there are many degrees and many ways of interpreting blindness. Blind from birth, as this man was, born blind, never having any notion of what anything looks like. And then the gradual loss of sight that some people suffer, or maybe even having permanently poor eyesight, and, of course, most dramatically, the literally, the literal blind spots that we have uh, when uh, the optic nerve reaches the retina and there is a, a spot which is not sensitive to light. We, do, we cannot see. That's what we call a blind spot. And we talk about people not taking a blind bit of notice, <laughs> maybe of a sermon or something. A blind bit of notice is using the imagery of blindness to explain uh, indifference or lack of understanding. And being made blindfold, being maybe kidnapped, and blindfolded, or in some game we play. 
But of course, in the scriptures, this very familiar phenomenon of sight and sometimes the lack of sight carries a spiritual message. Because to lose one's way in life is like to lose one's sight. It's a lack of understanding, a lack of insight, a lack of partiality. Uh, to have spiritual blind spots when we actually don't see our own weakness. We don't see clearly what we must do. And sometimes we are asked to help others and we're perhaps in a worse condition than those we are asked to help. The blind leading the blind, as Jesus put it. And so we turn to God and we turn to the scriptures and we find that Jesus declares himself the light of the world and that he has come to bring light to us, to show us the way, the truth, and the life which is deeper than the physical world or the emotional world or any other world. This is the deepest level of truth. But it's not a level that we automatically reach. The man in the story today met Jesus as a human being man to man. But later in the story, when questioned by the Pharisees, who were, of course, hostile, they asked him who he was or what he thought of him, and he said he is a prophet. So he moves in his spiritual insight from meeting Jesus as another human being to meeting Jesus as a prophet. And finally, at the end of the story, to meet Jesus as Lord. He is Lord. He is moved to faith and says, I believe, and falls down and worships Jesus. This is the journey of faith that we are on. And Jesus tells us, and we constantly meditate on this, that Whatever we say of Jesus, we should be able to say to some degree of ourselves. Jesus himself said, I am the light of the world. But he also said in the Sermon on the Mount, you are the light of the world, speaking to his disciples. You are to be, we are to be light to others. It means that we should be able to see ourselves as we really are, able to see the way, at least the immediate way, to follow Jesus, able to point out things on the way, and to be able to see Jesus on the way. And so the, today we pray for the gift of sight, spiritual sight. Open my eyes, Lord, to the wonders of your love. We are the blind people at times, sitting in the street, begging. And so we pray for healing spiritual healing, that we may see our way and that we may be light to others. This echoes the long centuries of waiting to see the light in the Old Testament, 
where the Psalms say, It is your face, O Lord, that I seek. Hide not your face. We want to see holiness. We want to see heaven on earth. We want to live in the light. Amen. Let us stand to say the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Look on us, Lord, in our darkness, and lead us into the light that we may give you glory and share the joy of the Lord. For our church and parish community, that we may share the vision of gospel, compassion, and mercy in our life together. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our bishops, priests, ministers, and religious educators, that God's work may show forth in their ministry among us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who develop and govern matters of public policy, that the dignity and sacredness of every person may be upheld and honored. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who provide medical and pastoral care, 
that they may open our eyes to the wonders of God's love for us in all of life and creation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are mentally impaired or physically disabled, that we may be given the grace and wisdom to enable them to use their gifts for the benefit of the entire human family. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, that they may be one day awake and arise, arise in the light of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers we now offer in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray also for peace in our society and for calmness tomorrow during the protests, that life may be respected and that peace will prevail. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord of light, grant us your vision of selfless love that we may make real in our lives the prayers and hopes that you alone see in the depth of our hearts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. So let us pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the grace and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His We place before you with joy these offerings, which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of all the world through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By the mystery of the Incarnation, he has led the human race 
that walked in darkness into the radiance of the faith and has brought those born in slavery to ancient sin through the waters of regeneration to make them your adopted children. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we with all the hosts of angels cry out and without end acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. You never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church 
and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Stephen, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ Bring eternal life to us who receive it. 
Lamb of God, Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. <coughs> the body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen.
The Lord anointed my eyes. I went, I washed, I saw, and I believed in God. Let us pray. O God, who enlightens everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty and love you in all sincerity through Christ our Lord. Look upon those who call to you, O Lord, and sustain the weak. Give life by your unfailing light to those who walk in the shadow of death. And bring those rescued by your mercy from every evil to reach the highest good through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Mass is ended. Let us go and serve the Lord with our lives. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in the day of battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him. We humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who wander through the world for the ruin of souls. Amen.